This is my um, blood sugar kit. This is my meter. Four times every day, 18-year-old Kristen Bates of Birmingham has to check her sugar level, the glucose in her blood. Kristen is a diabetic, and she has lots of company in Alabama. In our state, 638,051 people have diabetes, double the number of just seven years ago. That is one in every eight Alabamians. So what is the plague on so many houses in Alabama? According to the American Diabetes Association, it's a disease in which the body does not produce or properly use insulin, a hormone that's needed to convert sugar, starches, and other food into energy needed for daily life. The cause of diabetes is a mystery, but family history and environment appear to play roles. Right now, there is no cure, and as many as 200,000 adults in our state may have diabetes and not know it. Untreated and undiagnosed, it will kill you. Dr. Mary Lauren Scott spends her days trying to prevent that. An endocrinologist at Children's of Alabama, Dr. Scott wants parents to look for the warning signs. Any child, um, skinny, heavy, normal weight, um, if, if they're having uh, more frequent urination, increased thirst, um, especially if they've um, gone, gone to the point where they're bedwetting again and they, they had stopped. Unexplained weight loss and fatigue, all of these signs come together. Other symptoms include blurred vision, sudden weight gain or loss, excessive thirst, increased hunger, tiredness, lack of interest and concentration, a tingling sensation or numbness in the hands or feet, frequent infections, slow healing wounds, and vomiting and stomach pain, often mistaken for the flu. At Children's of Alabama alone, they treated a total of 2,692 patients with type 1 and type 2 diabetes in the year ending October 31st, 2013. Let's define the two types. First, type 1, an autoimmune disorder where the body actually attacks the pancreas, the organ that makes insulin and regulates our blood sugar, so the body can't make insulin on its own. Type 1 diabetics always need insulin either injected or through an insulin pump. This type is most common in children and young adults. More common is type 2 diabetes, where the body isn't able to use insulin effectively and blood sugar levels aren't always stable. The pancreas is overworked and can't keep up with the demand for insulin. That's why people with type 2 sometimes have to take insulin. Unlike type 1, type 2 can be reversed. A diet rich in fruits and vegetables is one key to keeping blood sugar levels at normal levels. But here's the bad news in Alabama. 80% of Alabama adults and 85% of Alabama high schoolers report not eating five servings of fruit and vegetables a day. These numbers are far worse than the national average. Alabama's governor, Robert Bentley, who practiced medicine before entering public life, spoke with me recently about the state's diabetes epidemic. We can do things in our schools. Uh, we can do things in our lunchrooms. Uh, and, and just to, to encourage people to have a healthier lifestyle. And then there's exercise. Experts say adults should do two and a half hours of moderate aerobic activity weekly. And muscle strengthening exercises twice a week. How many of us do that in Alabama? Only 15%. Alabamians must get checkups annually and a big reason why? The reason that it re rears its ugly heads in adulthood um, when patients get diagnosed with kidney disease and diabetes at the same time is because it is a silent killer and it can linger for years with moderately elevated blood sugars that are doing you harm um, before they're even diagnosed. Dr. Scott says diabetes is best diagnosed at the doctor's office. A simple blood test can determine your glucose average over the past three months, sometimes called A1C. If it's under 5.7, that's good. 5.7 to 6.4 is considered pre-diabetic. And if it's coming in at 6.5 or higher, you're diabetic. Hey, Kristen, how are you? Fine. Things are going well for Kristen at last check. You've lost another 10 pounds since you were here last time. Kristen is in the group with the highest prevalence of diabetes in Alabama. Nearly 17% of African-American women in our state, about one in every six, have diabetes. For anyone newly diagnosed, I don't want them to be scared. It depends on how you live your life and how you work with it. Kristen is working hard. She's enrolled at UAB and wants to become an anesthesiologist. She stabilized her blood sugar with insulin, has lost 30 pounds, but not her sense of humor. I gave up Taco Bell for Lent. I try to drink more water. Well, some days it just don't work, but I try to drink more water when I can. Almost lunchtime. 
Kristen checks her blood. Oh, my blood sugar is 119. Kristen's a model for what all of Alabama must become, vigilant in the fight against diabetes. She faces her lifelong challenge with vigor and enthusiasm. Great advances have been made, but until there's a cure, experts advise that you know the signs and symptoms, get screened by your health care provider, quit if you smoke, lose 5 to 10 percent of your body weight, do 30 to 60 minutes of vigorous activity five days a week, lower calories and salt, increase fiber and limit carbs, and avoid excess alcohol. There's lots of help out there. Whether you've had diabetes for many years or like me, you're right on the edge. Check with your doctor or the American Diabetes Association. They have a big office in Birmingham. And if you'd like me to check on any story, please contact me at jeliasoff at wvtm.com. Jeff Eliasoff, Alabama's 13 Investigates.